Hello my beautiful badgers, have you ever wanted to have models in your game explode, squish and deform? Yes, of course you have. Well, now you can with Sculpting Pro, Mesh Deformation and this amazing live dev interview with Matej Vanko. This took place on my live Twitch stream or the w.twitch.tv slash the Messy Coder. Sit back, enjoy and find out how you can make your games go boom. Oh, you're live. I can hear you. Do not swear. Do not say fudge or bugger. You're live on the radio, on TV, in front of millions of people all over the world. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hi, people. There's, there's literally millions that, have, uh, that are joining us right now. Um, I mean, on the pla I mean, that's technically true because we're on Twitch, where there are millions of people watching Twitch right now just not necessarily all centralized on this one place but they could be uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us so late it's 11 o'clock for you so it's very late thank you so much it's kind of late but i guess i can make some time for like a few hours so it's getting tight are you by yourself or are you like in a in a in a, in a building or an apartment or a house with other people uh, can well, you can you make noise? Actually, I'm in a hostel, but I'm lucky to have a room for myself for a few hours, so I guess I can make a noise now. All right. So, does that mean that you're allowed to sing for us? Yeah, I guess I can sing for you, but I don't know many Slovakian songs, so mm. I guess I will be improvising. Well, do you know any Slovakian nursery rhymes or children's songs? And maybe <laughs> maybe you were sung to as a child. Mm, yes, I know, but I have a better song Ooh. that I choose. So, so I guess you will like it somehow. <laughs> oh, I'm 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 so excited! I'm, I'm my hands are shaking. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool, cool. So the band is called in Slovakian Tublatanka, and. Uh, the song is basically about friends and a group of friends and so making new friends and it's a really nice song and i always sing with with my friends on parties awesome and, oh wow um, so you're 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 setting the bar hard then if, if you're if you're always singing this is gonna this is gonna be epic we should well i don't <laughs> i don't always sing this i usually sing this when i am really drunk or when i'm with a very good <laughs> group of friends so i guess this is it <laughs> let's do it let's let's do it. and well, do you know what start. while you're doing it i'll put your mesh deformation okay. video in the background as the background <laughs> video. all right so take start it away the best <laughs> okay so i will sing in a slovakian okay it's i can translate it in real time no no don't translate real time i want i want, I want to hear okay, the beauty cool. of the language Okay, so let's go. Loď, ktorá sa plaví do neznáma. Stratí svoj svet, ak ju opustíš. Čaká preto, že ju práve ty nezradíš. Tak ještě chvíli zostaň. Chvíli zostaň. Kým tu máš prijatelů? OK, I think that's enough. <laughs> that, I really sing the song. That was love. It's totally, I, I it's love a song how... <laughs> like <laughs> for the pubs. I love how you were stopping and letting them, like, the, the, for the music. <laughs> You were doing it in you know, time was, with the music. It's lovely. I could imagine actually, music playing in the background as you were doing it. Exactly. I was trying to imagine the music because I can't really <laughs> sing it without the music. So, oh well, I tell you what, it was beautiful. It and it worked really well with your uh, deformation video in the background as well. It must have been embarrassing. So that was it was delicious. Just... <laughs> okay, thanks. And that, that was that was the beautiful voice of Matthew Vanko, uh, Matty, uh, over on the Unity Asset Store, creating amazing tools to help you make your games and also 
singing as well. But you all, um, you know what? We're going to do a proper introduction. Everybody sitting at home after that beautiful music intro, give a warm and messy welcome to <laughs> Magic Franco. Uh, also, uh, a musician, not just a Unity uh, asset store creator. But if I pop over to your page, it says here um, that you're a software developer, hobbyist, musician, and programmer. So officially, this beautiful song was sung to us by a, a musician, uh, not just a programmer. Welcome to the stream, oh, mate. Was... Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction and for invite, inviting me here. So. It's a pleasure to be here and finally talk to you, I guess, after a few months we've been planning this. Yeah, I mean, do, finally... do you know what? It's embarrassing for me that I didn't know much about your defamation <laughs> tool until it was in the bundle. And no, it's, your it's tool's been far. there for five years on the asset store, hasn't it? Well, there are a lot of assets, so I guess it's not necessary to know each asset, so... It's totally normal, and it's up to people what what they are looking for, actually. Yeah, but this is amazing. This is like um, for those in chat who watched my live interview for um, the um, the mesh destruction tool, which was oh my god, my head my head's just gone blank. Rayfire, there we go. Uh, this is the squishy deformation equivalent. Of Rayfire, everyone loves Rayfire and how you can shatter things and break them. Well, the mesh deformation tool is like the equivalent of that, but to make things go squishy, dented, uh, crushed, uh, and even just to reshape them. And I originally thought that this was just a run uh, thing to do in the editor, not in the runtime. But you can deform things as the players are running or crashing their cars can't they yes that's true but first of all i wouldn't really uh, compare my package to the rayfire because rayfire is really on another level made by professional i'm just i guess i started this as a hobbyist and uh, as a really very fresh indie game game yes indie game developer and uh Secondly, yes, you are true. I was mostly focusing on the uni universal plugin that will or that could run in uh, re real time and in the editor. So, I mean, just the video now that we're seeing is is splashing around. Your 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 smashing stuff up in that video. I've I've put in some things into a project. I'm going to share my screen with you now. On Discord, so you can see my screen in real time and not have the delay of the stream. Uh, and then I want you to show me how I can how I can squish and deform things because I'm really excited. I can't believe that this was in a bundle first of all because it's so powerful, and the fact that um, you know it's it's one of those things that you get in a bundle that you can actually use. A lot of times. You, there's a bundle and it's just full of stuff that you're never going to be able to use in a real project you could actually it's, it's shocking this is an asset that is actually helpful it has a purpose it can be used in a, i i was this was in the bundle i have this yes this i don't know if you got that particular bundle i thought every single person on the planet bought that bundle but matt you're saying uh maybe not the case uh well uh, first of all, I was shocked as well, in a good way, for, of course, that Unity chose me to the bundle, which was, uh, you know, the thing as well. But also, you know, it helps people a lot in their projects, and I got a really good respon response for, from them. And also, the feedback is very positive. So that's why I made my community on Discord, and people are really stunning and what what can what can they create in the project with my assets which is totally fascinating and you know um, i'm really happy about that and uh, it must be exciting really to see that it's like you made something in your bedroom that other people are now using in their games or in their projects exactly it's still blowing my mind literally <laughs> So you're you're effectively an uncredited developer in all these people's games, if you think of it like that. Uh, 
I think my my biggest credit or the biggest profit from it, not financial, but the, the people are really liking it and uh, they use it in their projects that are really successful. And that what makes me really proud of my jobs and my assets. So I guess it's all about the people. That's and true. That, that was also the reason why, why I started with the uh, with making the assets and the plugins for Unity because, of course, I needed some tools to, to make my development much faster, but also found out that I can share it with other people that might find it helpful. And that's cool on this platform, on the Unity Asset Store and on the whole community itself. So you're... I alluded to this before that you've actually made some games. If you go over to the uh, Unity Asset Store and you click on, I put a link in chat for you all. So if you go over here and then you click on uh, Portfolio, right? and he's very, he's very, very modest. His map here. Look how, look how young and youthful and handsome he is. Look at that. He speaks Slovakian, Czech, and English. Wow. Okay. So. Really, I somehow disconnected because of my Wi-Fi. You just need to change this to say you can sing in all these languages as well. Oh. I'm I'm very sorry. Anyway, maybe I lost the connection. So I, I was just I was just saying that your resume on your website, you're very modest, okay. and also you look very young. And youthful. Uh, I mean, you, how old are you? 12, 13? Look, look at him. Look how young and. It's, de it's, it's depressing. So old, <laughs> years old. So, you, like, you've, got, you've got mobile games here Barkeep, uh, Legal Hacker, Adventures of the Secret Book. They sound awesome. Uh, yes, all these, all those. Those games are made during the game jam with my friends from Struct9. So it's, it's not really my games, uh, it's just games that I ported to the other platforms like mobile or WebGL. Yeah, but you worked on it. I mean, there's not many people that would be 100% solo game developers. Um, but you've got this uh, Silent Santa 3. That was, that was all yours, Matt's Creations? Yeah, yeah, Matt's Creations is my solo project that I run for like a few years because why not? <laughs> I loved, I've got to say, that um, I was watching that, you know, I was watching the, the video that you've got here, the trailer for, and, and I was looking at this thinking, this is, this looks like such an awesome game. It really is. Um, Very much. And it is the idea, the concept of it, it was like an open world toy building game. <laughs> well, to be honest, I still don't understand why I made it. But you know, <laughs> when the PewDiePie played the first part, I was so motivated to continue in the development. So I made oh, the second wow. part. Oh wow! So PewDiePie played was, your game? Yeah, you know, it wasn't really uh, that uh, rational or. It was mostly a joke, you know. It was a part of his uh, meme collections, so I, I took it as a joke as well as the game itself because it looks really funny and the Santa and the elves are, or do do look like, uh, you know, very creepy. <laughs> well, even even his glove, it it, it looks like a a, a scary yeah. crab claw. <laughs> it's it, it's it's Santa coming to. To attack the children at night time. It's... <laughs> but love, like you made the toy, and then it's got the remote control to be able to control the toy as well. Well, it's every game I made, I, I learned something. So I guess that was the, mostly the point that I realized later, like in the later years, especially now that I realize how how much those games gave me, you know, experiences and all of this. That's the best thing you can do. Just keep on making small game. Every every small game you you make, you've learnt a, a new solution to a problem that you would never experience before, and that's what makes you better, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now check out the multiplayer, Santa Deathmatch. 
<laughs> it's madness. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. <laughs> so which of your popping back into Unity though? because uh, I wanna I wanna jump straight into the to diff the, I wanna learn how to use your deformer. Hello Gildar, Gildar's in the chat. Um which of your games have you met, that you've worked on have you used your deformation tool? Oh uh, well one of the games that really represents the deformation tool is uh, the guard. The guard is all also published on Steam, and it's not really that uh, popular or not popular. It's not popular at all, but not that successful. It's it has a mixed reviews. The game itself it's kind of boring because uh, well, all you, all you do is just creating a world and you know sculpting the landscape, and you are you are literally a god that is making or shaping a locally world. I guess that's all. It's a creative game. I'm trying to. Here we yeah. go. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find the page. Here we go. Is you can it... click on this page. Ah, oh, here we go. You got to trade it. You got to trade it down yeah. the bottom. Let me put a link to that in chat. The game has already four years, so it's kind of old game for us. So it's like or black and white. white. Do you remember black and uh, white? Black and white. So uh, let me check it out. You have you don't oh come on. The 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 one Peter Molyneux game where the you're the god and you're the, you're this big hand and you come down and you you pick and you make like an animal as your totem and you can slap Ooh. it about and it can eat the villagers. Yeah, sure, sure. I remember. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this this has given me those vibes, populous vibes. I was thinking about making a game like this today. I was thinking, why are there no good God games anymore? Well, uh, do you know the game Spore? Yes. That's old. Uh, yeah, and that's old. And uh, maybe that, uh, this, the game Spore is one of the reasons why I started with the game development, because I, I, I still love how you can get creative in that game. And so that motivated me to you know learn the game development and and those stuff so i and also i love i very love uh, creative games so so the god was one of my first i guess very creative games where you can create create your world from scratch and all this um, deformation is done so, with your mesh deformation tool yeah yeah there is used a sculpting light modifier which helps you to sculpt the landscape and, you know, edit edit the world to landscape. Wow. I was going to ask you, like, what is the performance hit of using your deformation tool? So, like, do, uh, doing all of this now, you've deformed... Okay. Uh, is this deforming the terrain or is this a plane that's down there? Uh, you are deforming not unity terrain, but uh, actually a mesh, just a unity mesh. Because you... Uh, Unity terrain works on another principle than the mesh, and I wanted to make a sculpting universal, like you can use it on, on any mesh. You know, Unity terrain is just the Unity terrain. You can make a face or, or a planet or something like that. So I wanted to make a sculpting tool. Well, that's another topic because I have another sculpting tool, not just the sculpting light, which is a part of uh, mesh deformation, but there is that's also it. a sculpting pro, which is... Uh, a single asset but we can talk about it later oh yeah i've imported that one into this project as well so you could show me the difference between the two because i was fascinated sure. to see the difference and thank you for the follow in chat um now i'm gonna so can you have like a massive mesh like you know the, like you've got that 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 looks like a small world if you went yeah. really big and you were deforming it would the performance be be like terrible or can you actually have lots of large meshes deformed using your it's, it all, Yeah, it all depends on uh, count of the vertices and the uh, target platform. If you have really, really high poly mesh and you are targeting to some, I don't know, low end uh, Android phone, I guess that will be a problem. It also depends on the device and its performance. And um, so yeah, 
So those those are two factor fa factors, and it's a vertex count and the target device or target target platform. I've loaded up your, as you can see, my screen. I've got this. Yeah. Damn it. What do I do now? Do I do I do I squish it? Or do I? And no, you are just uh, exploring the shapes that are possible to generate procedurally. Oh, in, uh, so this is actually this is actually creating the shape. Yeah, you can pause the scene and you can uh, play around in the inspector. This is just a really quick show off. Now, in, if you disable the maximize window, the scene window, and uh, unpause the game or the application. And if you go to the scene and enable the wireframe mode, so you can see the vertices. Um, oh, I hate this new version of Unity. What is? Oh, you're oh, using. It. Yeah, it's. it's, it's yeah. I, I, I finally, after like twelve, fifteen years of uni using Unity, I've, I, I got used to the old menus, and now I've got to learn everything again. Yeah, me too. I still use two thousand twenty-one, so I. I... I'm really surprised how it looks like now. So if I change that what to cone, is that now the no. Wow. Now you can you can select the, the object and you can explore the inspector. You can play around with the, oh, with can the I slider. If I if I change oh no did I, oh update if I change that then an update mesh. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now you can change the width, height, or length. Or if you change to another shape, you can just uh customize the ver vertex count the resolution huh. that's awesome you can also enable the update every frame you don't have to press the update mesh ah, okay every time. Yeah. that's it and now you can see the vertices changes or the vertex count changes this is lovely i guess the <laughs> package is all about <laughs> exploration you know you have to play around with it yes. you have to be a curious person i guess i suppose making a doc making the documents read me and stuff like that for, for for an asset like this um you spend more time making the documentation than you would be making the asset <laughs> i guess it's still in the progress as well as the package so <laughs> i'm still writing it <laughs> oh mesh painting what's this So if I, oh wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is two D painting. You can switch to the three D painting as well. <laughs> That's cool. So how long did it take you to make this? I mean, the first version, because as you say, it's it's been on there for five years, and you're still making updates to it. But when was the first, the first version yeah. ready? So the very first ver version I made when I was like, um, when I was like thirteen years, thirteen years old, I guess. No, I hate I you. Was... <laughs> I'm <laughs> ending the stream now. This is disgusting. You were thirteen. I was just very interested. I guess it's everybody has their own way. So I guess you are never late. <laughs> when when did and, you uh... when how did you learn? Where did you learn all this? You could, I was because you couldn't have learned uh, it at university because you were thirteen. Uh, well, as I said, I was very interested in the games and in the game development itself. So, so I was googling and reading books and those stuff. Well, I was very, you know, introverted and <laughs> being nerdy. <laughs> That's crazy. So, did, when you were old enough um, to specialize at school and at, at college. Did you go and do a, like official training and, and education in game development? Well, no, I'm actually I have actually um, art school, so I have nothing to do with the game development officially. But well, in my free time, I was doing this the assets and the programming stuff because that just caught me, and um, I still really like it. And I guess I will. I will try to do the best to progress even higher. Well, being an artist, you're going to end up making art for games, I'm going to assume then. Oh, uh, well, I can do modeling or texturing and those things, but 
well, I have friends who are much better in this or in this area. So I guess it's it's better to make a team that specialize in the, in other areas. And so I'm not really into modeling because that requ it requires a patient and an artistic eye. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really feel like an, I have an artistic eye. Also, I don't really have a patient for it. So, so I guess uh, programming and the technical technical part of project development is is a mine or why is this? Does this only work on a touch screen? Because I'm clicking things on this yes, one. Yes, this this is mobile ah, damn. version. Yeah, I was I was looking forward to poking that one. Uh, let's go into this one here. Mesh slime. Oh my God, you got so yeah. many. Well, I wanted to do mesh damage. Let's do mesh slime first. I'm intrigued by that. I still can't get over the fact that you're like 13. Oh my uh, well, god. It didn't sell anything when I was 13 because that will be illegal on the asset store. I started selling when I was like 16 or 17 years old, I guess. No, 15. Yes, 15. I was going to say, uh, like, you could have put it in like your parents' name. But then you have to trust them not to take all of your profits. Look at this. Oh wow! So I, so you can make snow. Hi, sorry, I, I just got lost the connection once again. I know, but I was just saying that if you were so, when you were thirteen, you could have sold on the asset store and put it in your mother's name or your parents' name, and just hope that they yeah. don't steal all your profits. Um, but I was I was afraid of it because you know uh, I was thirteen and I was just playing games and playing around the engines and you know finding my way what fits me the best. So I wasn't really really thinking about selling anything. So have you have you made like a, a snow scene and had the footsteps like with your Santa game? Did was it using this to make footprints in the snow? I. Uh, not this modifier actually this modifier was uh, created for a few clients that that ha that had a request for uh, you know you know those applications when where you touch the screen and it's really satisfying uh visually you it looks like a slime basically <laughs> i don't know if you know what i'm talking about yeah. i guess it's a really stupid application you know if you touch the screen and the slime is moving and it should look like uh, very satisfying. So it was, it, it's a modifier basically for this <laughs> as a requirement for those clients. But for the footsteps in the snow, there is a um, few modifiers that actually allow you to do that. And that's the interactive landscape. Ooh. If I'm, uh, Which one's that uh, under? It should mean the modifiers and yeah, interactive surface, oh, not yeah. the interactive landscape. You've got so many. Let's make a and uh, you could also use it's called um, surface tricking. That's that's the GPU based. This is uh, CPU based, which runs mostly in on uh, in a processor. Oh, okay, so this one's CPU. Yeah, this is this one is CPU. And which one's the GPU based one? And that's the surface tricking. It's a little bit higher if you scroll scroll up. Uh no, it's it's down there, yeah. Surface tricking. Surface tracking there it is. Yeah. Uh, I guess the interactive landscape or interactive su surface has a better quality as a surface. It it looks like it doesn't Ooh, even I got work. A uh texture create failed col color format we got a shader oh we got some okay looks like an error it's the, strange it's the gifts of the latest version of unity okay could be could be true because it's a gpu based and unity changes the you know the shader compile compilation every version i guess so this this could be by the unity version there you go. This is a gift for me to you. I found it's not a stream if I don't find a bug. It doesn't count as a stream if there's no bugs, and we found a bug. There we go. That's totally okay. I appreciate it. Gift. It's all part of the service. 
It's all part of the service, buddy. Don't worry. We'll be giving away a copy of this for anyone who didn't manage to get the bundle. Uh, I don't know where you are hiding. Although, to be honest, I've missed a couple of bundles in the past. And I've been livid, absolutely livid, when I found out that there was a gem in there. If you missed the last bundle and this, and you missed this because this was a gem, then don't worry. We're going to give one lucky winner a, a, a chance to win later on. Look at this. This is awesome. Squish, 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 squish. I really appreciate that. Oh my gosh. Squish. So can I make it like um, more, if, it, if it's like a, a very detailed mesh, can I make the deformations um, less defined so that I'm not using up more, like, you know, basically using up more memory? Or, or or vice versa so like if it's a very simple mesh can i take that existing mesh and subdivide it and then deform it more uh, yeah you can actually subdivide the mesh that means that you can increase the vertex count and it's also possible in the at the real time so <gasps> real time well, uh, it could take some time to process because Unity uh, handles the vertexes in kind of strange way, but I can't describe how because I'm not really good at the Unity source, source or how the Unity really work. I just read that on the forum, so I still can't. But there are definitely yes, it's complicated, but there are all, definitely there are some limitations. I love this. All right, well, I'm going to get straight in because I can sit here playing with your demos all day. But you know what? That's not going to teach me anything, Matt. I'm going to learn nothing doing that. So what I've done is I've randomly chosen some assets that I like the look of. Um, so let me let me pull up the the uh, the pay the asset store. Okay, so first off, before we jump jump into the sculpting pro, I want to uh break things using the deformation deformation collection now in your demo videos you've shown some cool cars getting squashed and, and buildings and things so what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw in some let me put a link in chat here is a free asset it's a spaceship so anyone who's got this asset uh the deformation or wins it tonight can try this this is a free asset it's called uh spaceship okay <laughs> imaginatively titled <laughs> and i figured it's got enough weird bits on to make it interesting also it's made up of different parts so cool. this should be a fun thing to to squish and deform um so this is going this is going to be the first thing that i want to try breaking there's a few different use cases that i want to break in this so let me find uh spaceship which one is it is it you i put a couple of different space no that's space fighter space ship here it is so let's open up his demo scene oh that looks pretty you can still see my screen yeah 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 sure uh missing prefab okay delete you and Oh wow, okay, there's a load of them in there. We've got some missing scripts, what I'm going to assume is just the post-processing. Oh, does this work with HDRP and uh, and all that nonsense? Um, if I work in a shading languages. Yeah, so if I, if you, if I was doing a HDRP or URP yeah. project, would I still be able to use your deformation? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Well, so it, it's it's actually the you're, shading you're, language also be. you're you're actually deforming the mesh. You're not doing tricks with the the shader, are you? Because uh, some yeah, people I, and I can now, yeah. Uh, well, you are physically deforming the mesh. You are literally moving the vertices. Not uh, it's it's running on CPU basically, not on in this GPU on on in the on the shading language. But you can also use the standard shader it's called standard deformer it's a shader that the mesh deformation package contains and you can use it uh, 
it could be sometimes much more effective than the modifiers. It depends on your goals as well. So. And is all this in your online your documentation that you've got? Yeah, yeah. I really need to read. Look, nobody reads the documentation, do they? Let's be honest. Like, was yeah, it five percent? <laughs> but I guess it represents your package. Uh, you know, many developers that read the documentations, and uh, me too, because I think that uh, reflects how the how the developer has a rich developer has a responsibility to provide uh i guess at least some documentation and some advertising of his package so for the assets so yeah oh that looks cool did you see them they were just flew off all right we want to stop them flying off because then uh i can't find them That's anymore. An animation yeah. yeah that was lovely wasn't it uh where's all right, where's your what's the animation on it's okay, yeah. it's, yeah. on, it's on. It's on the actual. It's not on the ships. It's on the. It's on the parent object. That's crazy. That's la That's the laziest one. Um, in my honest opinion, his documentation is really well done. Okay, the full time lord has congratulated you on your documentation. Well done. Oh, thank you very much. I am trying to improve improve the documentation every at least every year, and uh, well, I am. I'm really dependent on the feedback from the users. So I guess you guys maybe who are interested in the package or who even use the package, uh, well, you are, you are the guys who are basically creating the package and the whole documentation. Now, I've, I've not read anything. I've not okay. done anything. I'm just I, I'm like going around clicking stuff. So you've got a startup window take me to the intro uh, credits but this is all anyone who makes any custom windows uh, or custom uh, in, um, editors in unity it i mean you get my my hat taken off to you because i hate it so much i've had been having to do it in my own assets that i was trying to make and i I spent more time making custom editor windows than I did making the core programming of the asset. It is horrible. Oh, it's the worst thing in the world. How much time do you spend having to put up with the Unity editor? Uh, well, I started learning the Unity editor when I was like 16 or 17. It doesn't matter. It's I just had, I just had to start somehow because <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was very important for the customer to start somewhere and to have some introduction, not just readme file, but, you know, some window or, or some fancy stuff or just something, something visual, because, you know, my plugins, I, I try to do them for everyone who are not programmers or who are just beginners or, you know, level designers or just designers who, who like those stuff. So... Mm. I guess that was my goal to make uh, something, something visual and something friend, user friendly, and uh, and my my the trick is that I I basically have an interface or or a, or a, how to say it basically um, it's a modular script that allows me to build very uh, unity windows very easily <gasps> so you are oh. just you are just building a lego literally you oh wow I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to it's... sit and read through your code to see how you've done that and steal it learn from it and steal and steal all the ideas because that that sounds wonderful oh my okay. gosh it should be in the utilities <laughs> Oh wow! Well, the Hang on. Sub... utilities. So yeah. there you go. MD editor win utilities Lord. mesh startup wizards vertex tool. Man, and, and then you call your icons. So look, this is what I love: is all these little cool icons that you've made as well. Oh, it's all like so lovely, so professionally done. Oh, that. To be honest, I hate it making icons it was <laughs> it took me a long you know so such a long time to make them 
Oh man, it, look, it looks like I'm looking at an Adobe product. It really does. All right, enough <laughs> silliness. Let's. Okay, what do I do? What's the, I want? I want to make this ship. Uh, I want to deform this because I'm not happy with the shape of this. Now I want this to be different shaped. So what would I do then if I wanted to change the shape of of this thing? Well, I would firstly I would unpack the prefab completely because okay. I guess it's not really possible to edit the mesh when right. it's in the prefab. Okay. And now I would select the desired part. So just select the part you would like to edit. Uh, let's edit. What's this bit here? The cockpit extension. Oh, okay. Okay. So this, this, this looks just... complex enough. Look, it's uh, doesn't it? Okay. So now let's add a mesh edit, mesh pro editor component. Just add a component. Mesh. Yeah, you can do it as well. Uh, mesh editor. Mesh pro editor. Mesh Pro Editor. Would yeah. you like to create a new reference? If you agree, recommended, you create a new mesh reference. If you disagree, exit ex ex exist mesh references will share. Okay, I say yes because it says it's recommended. Oh, look at this, everyone. Oh, if anyone's tried to make their own editor and they see this, get even more depressed. Okay, so <laughs> um, I'm going to minimize this. So now, oh, wow. Okay, I'm just don't don't tell me anything. I'm just gonna just randomly do things. All right. Uh, oh my god! Literally just that. Just pick up a node and just move it. What if I change this? Can I change the scale of it? No. Okay. But I can move it. This is okay. Now I've moved it around. But so oh, it's created all of these different points. As as actual, oh okay, and then I'm I'm moving that, and then it's deforming based on the location of that. And now when I finish, I go back to the cockpit, and I untick it, and they've all disappeared. Wow. Uh, yeah, it looks. Um... If I can talk, yes. <laughs> to be honest, it looks really cool and it's uh, really helpful for a low poly or medium meshes or medium poly meshes. But when you have like uh, a high poly mesh or the mesh that has uh, like two thousand vertices and more, and then it's it's it will be, I guess it will be tricky and the performance might not be really good. And you know, it it all, all depends on the vertices count. And this kind of vertex ed editor, it's not really that effective in, in those cases. So, so it's very limited modifier the mesh pro editor. So it's 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 great for low poly stuff. But if it, this if this was a twenty thousand ver mesh, yeah, that will be an issue, I guess. So you have you you would be and if you have a ver if you have a mesh that has uh, more than two thousand vertices, I would recommend to use another modifier. I guess you could find definitely another modifier, such as a Sculpting Pro, or on, uh -huh. or an FFD modifier, or a mesh effect, uh, and so on. So I've got the Sculpting Pro in here as well. So yeah, but I... it's not a Pro; it's a Sculpting Light. Oh no, I've imported in Sculpting Pro, the separate oh, asset. Okay, okay. Cool. So, uh, I mean, this is nuts, first of all. Let me finish playing about with this one. So this is a, this was a good example. For that. I'm lucky that I chose a good example then to showcase this and that it was a, uh, it's not a ridiculously high poly uh, model. Man, this day is nuts. I honestly, day is crazy. I didn't think of it was going to be that. Like, I thought I'd have to then save it and then do all kinds of stuff. All oh, right, that's, that's nuts. And if I go here, back onto, um, where was I? I was playing about with, where's it gone? The, oh, he's taking it out. Oh, he's taking it out of there and it's put it down here. Okay. New mesh reference and it, I, I guess it's unparent. 
during the process. What's this identity modification? Um, identity modification tells you based on the documentation that uh, the, category, the category itself allows you to create a new mesh reference manually, or you can just save the mesh to the assets folder. Ah, uh, I guess so I can revert back to the original elements. one if I don't like it. Yeah, or you can just enable or disable creating a new mesh reference after the duplication or copy paste, basically. Or you can optimize the mesh or update update it every frame. If you disable the update every frame, you, you would be able to update the mesh uh, manually. Yeah. Ah. So now if you generate if you generate the vertices, and uh, if you keep the vertices alive, so if you enable the animation mode. Ooh. Oh. Oh yeah. yeah. Moving. Uh, but now you have to enable the animation mode. Let me go back to that. To so where's okay. animation yeah. mode? Sure. Yeah, it, it keeps the vertices alive when you switch the category. And now when you update the mesh, it will be updated manually. It, it just a feature for a better performance or if your performance is not really stable, this might, this might help you in some cases. Ah, oh, cool. But I noticed my collider then doesn't match this new mesh. Uh, add collider refresher, what's this? Yeah, uh, mesh collider refresher is another, another modifier that allows you to refresh a mesh collider in real time under specific parameters or you know the properties you choose. Oh, so now, oh, let me put that one back to oh, what is update. So I didn't bother update and refresh. I didn't have this collide thing when I started modifying my mesh. So now, is it too late for my mesh collider to be updated? Or no, it's not too late. A mesh collider refresher starts processing right after the first startup. So it's a real time thing, not really an editor, because you know physics and the those stuff are running just at roll runtime. So you don't have to really worry about the mesh. Oh, so this editor. this will be done in the runtime then. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, cool. You already have a mesh collider refresher, so. Oh, I'm very. This is crazy. I'm going to be mucking about with this like nuts now. I've been, I was looking for something like this. Right, so if I want to now have it so in one time, if I smash this with a big ball, like in your demo, what should I put on it? Um, sorry, my, my connection. Ah, here we go. Awesome. Oh, yeah. your audio sounds all different as well. Now you sound... Hello. Yeah, my earplugs are now <laughs> dead. <laughs> can you tell me? Uh, could you hear me very well? Oh, I can, I can hear you even better now than I could hear you before. Oh really? Cool. Yeah. Oh wow. So I guess it's, Mate, it's you need now. you need to sing again for us later then. Oh, it's really... <laughs> oh my god, this will be a really rough night. <laughs> so I w I want to deform this in real time. Okay, so you can just press play, I guess. That's all. Well, I don't need, to need do. I don't need to put another different thing on this. No, it's it's all done. You just enable the animation mode, which means that the mesh will keep. Uh, the, uh, the data all the time. Oh, you would like to edit in the game mode, or, or yeah, well, I want I want to I want to smash oh, it with okay, a ball. Okay. So you have to select your main camera and okay. add um, mesh editor real time, and that's all. Yeah. So, hang on, on my camera. Yeah, your main camera, and press add component, and you've got it there. Yeah, mesh editor real time. Okay. Um, do I need to do anything else on here? Well, it depends on you what features you would like to use. There is locks, like you can lock an X uh, axis and a Y axis. You can also use an uh, axis editor mode, which is well, how to explain it? It's like um, it's the same editor as you have in the Unity scene window when you you can basically select the vertices and move with it with three axes x y and z 
Oh my god. Yeah, you are actually... The selection zone looks really big, so you have to decrease the radius, uh, Rekha's radius. It's... Oh, I can't, I can't, oh. I, I did control Z, and now I've, I've, I've... What have I done? What have I done? I've done control Z. Uh, you are in the editor, and I guess... Uh, oh, you yeah, have control Z, but I removed, I removed the, th the yeah. thing. <laughs> uh, you have to press stop and then uh, pr play again, I guess it will go back. What the heck? Okay. But I'm in, I'm in the game mode. I'm in the game window. I'm not in the scene view. I'm in the game view. I don't, what? I don't, I'm confused. I'm in the game view and I can. Try, try to stop the game and uh, play again. I guess everything will go back to the normal and uh I can still see the red see... dots. Am I supposed to still see the yeah. red dots? Yeah, try to move with them. Just in case if it's uh if the measure's still working. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. How do I okay. Vertices. Okay, cool. I guess everything is set up. Right. And why uh, why oh, they why oh, have they I disappeared? Know, I know why. Because you were selecting an um the entire mesh. You have to remove the mesh collider from your mesh. And uh, also the mesh collider refresher. Ah, okay. So, what I do? Remove. Yeah. You have to remove the mesh collider. Okay. Remove you. The mesh collider refresher. Uh, where's the mesh collider refresher? It's right below the mesh pro editor. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, didn't notice that yeah. there. Okay, now. Now, I guess uh, the mesh should be working again if you move with the vertex with one of the points. Yeah. Okay. So now, if you press play, it should be working. But shouldn't it, if I untick the... this, shouldn't all these dots disappear now like they were d disappearing before? If you disable the animation mode. I oh, it's guess the animation it's... mode that's causing those all to be there still. Ah. Yeah. So if I put. if I. I've got animation mode on. I see all of the little dots. Yeah, animation mode makes the mesh keep the alive. You you are still able to edit the mesh anytime. Ah. Even if you disable the vertices mode. That's why it's called animation mode because you can animate the mesh anytime, and the mesh will remain. Okay. Now it's working. The problem was that the the modifier, the real time modifier of the mesh editor was uh, recasting with the uh, with the mesh collider itself so it had to, it had to be removed so now though if i've got a big ball mm -hmm. and i want to smash a big ball into this what would i do well so, for this yeah there is a modifier called a mesh damage that allows you to actually interact with the surrounding world and the, uh, with the physics <gasps> oh so, would that work in multiplayer as well can i sync that that mesh damage yeah sure no way because I, I guess, oh my I guess god it's a well the, 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 uh, Sandy, hello sandy sandy's just joined the chat um i've i'm i'm making a a, a series of um how to make a game in multiplayer and uh, I was making a tech. I made a crazy taxi game, and I, I ended up making having it for my kids. And I was using the universal vehicle controller mainly because it had the mesh def deformation um, built in. But uh, he hasn't done any work to sync that, and I was having to do the you know sync those changes myself. And I'm far too lazy to do all of that. So I was like, you know, it'd be great if there was a deformation tool on the unity that did that and i wasn't restricted to just only having it from uh, a particular vehicle controller and lo and behold i had a deformation tool from the bundle and i was like i've got a deformation tool i wonder if it can do real time and yes you can hello scout and dickens welcome to the stream buddy um that's amazing so now if i so i don't need to have i'm going to put it on this piece here do I remove the mesh pro editor part then? 
Well, actually, if you apply um, pros, uh, mesh, mesh damage, it I guess it wouldn't really look uh, that good because the mesh actual mesh has a very low low resolution of vertices. If you if you enable the wireframe mode again, you will see that the, it has a very low count of vertices. So I guess it will be good to increase this this number of the vertices. And you can actually do it in the mesh modification category in the mesh pro editor. What? Yes, and there is a mesh smooth and mesh subdivision. What? Mesh so discount by moving the subdivision level to the higher level, like let's say four or three. Yeah, four. I guess four is cool. I press that, and then more. Purchases. No. And now, if you apply the mesh damage. No. And go to the modifiers. It's below the subdivision mesh button. Oh, do I not do it? You've. Uh... Oh, you, you, you can just edit it. Uh, edit it right, let me, let me yeah. do it. Let me do it the other way. Modifiers. Okay. This because because you've used an editor. I've got to use your editor. Yes. Uh, this, this is this is a shortcut for modifiers. Yeah. Mesh damage. Your selected mesh has more than two thousand vertices. Three thousand three hundred eighty-three. Would this will slow editor performance? Would you like to continue? Yes, I would. Uh, yes, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We'll do it. Oh my god. Okay, so now I've got where did the other where did the other script go? It it has been replaced by the mesh damage. You can really use uh, more than one one modifiers at once, unfortunately, because that would there would be a conflict between the vertices and modification between the vertices. Okay. That's fine, but I love the way they automatically did it for me. Um, do I add mesh collider refresher? Because I want that, don't I? Because it'll be, it'll be impacting. So, so that needs to be added. Um, and then, let me go back into this view. Um, I'm sorry, my connection has been lost again, but I'm here again. <laughs> That's alright. You're back again. That's all that matters. All right. So now, if I make a big ball, create a 3D object. A uh, massive sphere, right? Well, this is a good size sphere. I could just ram this sphere into it, couldn't I? Uh, well, it will be better if you, you body and destroy it by itself. Oh, hang on. So I, I missed you. Say it again. That it will be better if you could let the sphere destroy it by itself. Like if you add a rigid body to the ball and uh, let the ball fall on onto the ship oh yeah okay i think that's that's go that's the goal or that's the point of the mesh damage all right so uh nice okay and also if you select your mesh that has a mesh mesh damage modifier i would enable the out auto generate radius this will, this will basically um, detect a radius in which the vertices will be, you know, proceed, proceed or how to say that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some more balls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I should really do this programmatically. Make lots of automatically generate hundreds of balls. Oh wow, I'm loving I'm loving just making balls now. This has turned into the ball making stream. <laughs> okay. You're you're Let's have a ball party. It is a ball party. It's a Ludum <laughs> Dairy ball party. Okay. I'm gonna bring this camera in about here. And also your mesh um needs and the mesh collider, I guess. Oh yeah, because we removed yes. that mesh collider, didn't we? Oh, cool, mesh. cool, you've got it there. There's a mesh collider refresh already, so you don't need a mesh collider anyway. Oh, I don't need to put a mesh collider, collider on there. Okay, remove yeah. that. Mesh collider refresh will, will take care of it, so no worries. Ex exactly. Um, Yolen, this is an asteroid belt. We've, we've flown into an asteroid belt. Uh, <laughs> and if I can move a line to view to select... Oh, 
lined up with line model to okay from here a line with uh move a line to view there we go and oh it's got that field of view there we go so i feel why is it looking so weird it's because of the field of view okay let's make that big because that deserves to be massive maximize all right drop your balls <laughs> the other balls missed you cool. know what i was thinking should i make to see if the balls are are gonna hit it or not i should have really checked and my balls were can check you. always check your balls matt always check your balls okay how's that one now i see that i completely misses all right so that ball goes there how's that balls yeah that ball's okay Let's move that ball a bit over here. There we go. And my balls aren't heavy enough, I've noticed, to do some serious damage. So you need nice heavy balls, surely. Okay, how about that one? I'm right, gonna put that here. There we go. Lovely. That, that, that's going to be a... Do you know what? I'm going to make all my balls a thousand. Uh, the mass actually don't really affect the mesh, so... Oh, okay. Uh, the, it's, it's not going to be the, like the speed impact. of my ball falling down. Yeah, definitely. The impact is the factor of the mesh deformation or the, of the, or the mesh damage. So, so you should make them a lot higher. All right, let's make our this balls higher. Or you can just increase the the impact uh, impact number. You can just increase the number on your mesh. Uh, there, there should be an application field for that. There is a not force detection. Force multiply. Uh, yes, force multiply. Yes, definitely. Okay. Like zero point one, I guess. Here okay. we go. Let's smash our balls. Oh my balls! Nice. Oh, well, I noticed that the other one didn't. Did, did all my balls miss the other one? No, surely not. As my ball was falling, did they? Let's have a look at. The, let's have a look from this view. Do you know what? I'm gonna turn off the uh, remain unfocused. Play unfocused. Let's turn off our gizmos, and I'm gonna put on the. You know what? We're going to put on the wireframe one. Here we go. Let's see our balls. Drop our balls. Those ones just bounced off. Well, looks like a heavy ball. My that is like indestructible to my balls. Maybe they are very small for death. So basically, I need bigger balls to make make more of an impact. Or the higher um, altitude. I mean, that was they were pretty high, to be fair. Okay. I mean, look, that's a, that was a pretty okay. I make my I'll take my balls even higher. Okay. That will be a massive impact. Okay, let's drop our balls. Drop our balls. What well, he's saying that increasing the mass Yolan doesn't make an impact on my balls. Oh no, I guess those balls are really small. I mean that uh, one that one did it. Look, you can see there. Okay, I guess there is a small impact of that. But still you can you can increase the the auto generator radius. If you disable the auto generator radius and increase the number in the modifier on the right. You can actually control the impact radius. Oh, which I'm putting to one. Oh, I would say a little lower number, like I don't know, zero point twenty-five. Let's oh, see. Okay. I don't know what what's the radius actually, and this affects the vertices right after the impact of the object. All right. So try to increase this number for like, as it was initially, initially like zero point five. 
Look at it. They pushed. They pushed down into it. That is a mess. That dent went all the way through. That could be. Look at that. You can just play around with that. That it is awesome. Look, look at my more. poor balls that they've done to that. And if I hey, do, you know what I'm going to do though? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to make another ball. Okay. I want to do what I, I want to do what I wanted to originally do. Okay. I'm going to make a big ball. And I'm going to okay. do, do I need to have a rigid body on my ball? Yeah. And I'm going to not, I'm going to turn off uh, and and I'm going to just for the sake of it, I'm going to make a he very heavy ball. And I'm gonna grab my ball, and if I am I, so if I grab my ball now and I just start ramming my ball against it, why is it not? Oh well, it's in a kinematic kinematic ah. sphere, so I guess it. And the impact or the speed of the of the rigid body object should be also much higher, I guess. It's it's not really possible to do it manually. But you can dam damage any mesh by the right cast. I did a bit of damage, look. I mushed up. Okay, so it does work, which is nice. Yeah, see? It's like a small child with a hammer going up to a car. I did it in the vi virtual reality, so... I guess it's kind of possible, but I never tried in <laughs> in the editor by myself you know holding the cursor <laughs> cool i love that i love it i love it um oh this is nuts i'm gonna be playing around with this for weeks i'm telling you now so if i if i have this on my um if i all i need to do was add the mesh damage on any vehicle and then i can just drive that vehicle into a wall and it will smash it up Yes, it's definitely possible. Oh, wow. Oh, my word. Now, I'm going to wow. add this on Turn the Games On uh, vehicle. Because I said to him, the only thing that you're missing, apart from multiplayer, which I keep uh, making fun of him all the time, that he needs to get his multiplayer working, is mesh deformation. And I don't, he doesn't need to add that, because I could just add this on, on, a, on, a, on a, any asset. I could add this onto any vehicle controller, and I've got mesh deformation now on any vehicle control. This is amazing. This is really, I can't believe I had this and I was making my taxi game and I didn't think of using this. It would have saved me so much of like sitting there thinking, how am I going to do it? This is amazing. This is awesome. Wow. Uh, and let alone of like That's I can make snow footprints in the snow as well. Oh my word! Oh, this is brilliant. And if I go to, I'm going to load up another, another scene. Um, right. So this was a vehicle. I mean, that was just nuts. Okay, I'm going to try and. Right, here, this is this is a Roman. It's this. It's packs currently in a sale. That it's a new release on the asset store. Okay, it's made from Giga, um, okay. and it's called RPG Poly. There's an RPG poly series. This is the ancient, and here's a link in chat for anyone who wants to wants to grab it. Um, let me put it into my browser so you can all see what we're going to play about with. And it does look lovely. So it's from Giggle Gigel. I don't know how you pronounce his name. I'm going to say Geigel, like uh, Geiger. Uh, RPG poly pack, ancient village. Normally seventy one euros forty seven cents. It's half price, uh, thirty-five euro seventy-three, and the discount ends in nine days. It is a massive pack, and the thing about this pack that got me going, what, is that its poly count is sixty to thirty-nine thousand polys in this pack. Okay, there's a lot in this pack, and I'm sure this said twenty. Has he just done an update while we've been live releases? No, it was on the twenty-ninth. I was going to say I forgot a different number. But look, it looks beautiful, doesn't it, Matt? Mm, yes, I'm here. And it, uh, and yeah, it looks wonderful, very nice, very lovely. I think it's perfect for your deformation tool because it's not uh, loads. And it's, I want to see, can you do poly? Will I be able to deform 
a polygon style asset. Let's have a look. That's definitely possible, yeah. Oh. I think you should try the FFD modifier, which is, I guess, one of the newest modifiers that I added a few months ago. Okay, so, we're, so that's in... Do I put back just, on the mesh? Uh, you can just add an FFD. FFD. Yeah, that's it. And you can now just press the refresh FFD grid. Refresh FFD grid. Now you can just move around with the spheres you can see there. And the object will <gasps> there from in some way. Yeah. What? What? What is what witchcraft is this? Uh, it's I guess it's one of the best modifiers that the package already <laughs> contains. <laughs> oh my word. This is mental. It's like I'm trying to make a clay pot on a potter's wheel and it's gonna have a it's like a, it's like the the movie Ghost. Do you remember Patrick <laughs> Swayze? Oh my word. When he was distracted with Demi Moore, you can't blame him. Uh, oh. You can also play around with uh, more more points or more notes, I get I would say. Oh wow, so I, I can add more um, balls. How do I Yeah. How do I do that? You have to you have to press the root, yes, that's it. And you can just clear the FFD grid or you could just go back with the object. Oh, how do I go back to the original site, uh, original mesh? Well, unfortunately, it's not possible in this version, but I, <laughs> I got it there because that was one of the feedbacks from my client stuff. I was going to I've just dis I've just destroyed my face. And I can't go back. I've melted it. Yeah, but you should have an original or initial state in the assets folder. So this is just a new reference in the Unity Sen, so... Oh, okay, cool. I was going to say, did, did did you make an original? Like, did you cop, did you make a, a new one? So where do I... Uh, how do I find my original one? What the heck? Um, you know what? I'm going to... I'm gonna Instead of doing that, I'm going to break this one. Let's break this one. All right, so... This is cool. I'm going to spend hours just mucking about this. All right, so... I'm going to make more balls. So what do I I'm do? I'm sorry, my connection just got lost again, but I'm here again. <laughs> hey, so, buddy. How do I make? How do I add more balls? I want more. I want more uh, balls in my life. As you can see, there are few options. There is a uh, field called FFD type, which is a field that tells you how many balls will be on your on your mesh. You can also customize this um, this value, but there are there are a few essential values, and it's two times two times two, three times three times three, and and four. And uh, yes, you can you can choose the four. I think this is this is one of the most recommended. And if you press refresh the grid now, <gasps> there will be more balls. And you can also adjust the note the node size so you don't have the spheres that large. Yeah, for like zero point one. Look at my balls. <laughs> you can also customize the shape. You don't have to have the balls. You can have like a cubes or a custom shape. If you want to be fancy. What the heck? Put a custom shape on? They go choose something random. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh. oh my god I love this I love this okay I'm gonna grab one of my Whoop. Whoop. yes the more the more notes you have uh, the more detailed it gets in editing the mesh oh my and this is all still on the CPU is it yeah, yeah, this is still on the CPU. Most of the plugins are, or just the modifiers are running on CPU. Man, I love this. This is just nuts. 
Well, what benefit have I got doing this rather than picking up the actual? Um, so if I now, you know, uh, oh, when I click refresh, it went back to the other one. Yeah, it gets back. Ah, oh, cool. All right. So now, right, if I remove this, okay, or go back to the mesh editor, go yeah. All right. Yeah. So now, if I do this, well, I've still got balls there. Oh uh, well, I guess this is still an issue that I removed in my actual version that I'm preparing for this year. So you can just delete this manually. It's safe. Ah, so I've oh, lots of objects. I've added. I got you a lot of balls or boxes rather than balls. <laughs> uh, so yeah. is it this thing? Balls of steel. Yeah, that's it. Balls. All right. So now, if I do, so what would be what would be the benefit of using the uh, FD? What did you call it? FFD. Yeah, versus it's me just grabbing these and. Roma. Um, uh, well, the. Because it's FFD. doing because it's doing more than than one at a time. I assume. Yeah, definitely. The FFD is working on the weights and how it affects each each note. So, it's more related to the. Uh, to the weight notes or the, you are basically, uh, controlling the weights of the mesh. This is this is the classic editor you can find in every editing software that, like you are, you are literally editing uh, vertices vertice per vertice. So, if I am clear enough, now you are. Perfect. It's it's really difficult to understand uh, to describe it, but I guess uh, yeah, the FFD is working on the weight notes, as I previously mentioned. So you have more controls over more vertices at the same time. So, and so you can also edit the values of the affection of each vertices, like a threshold, or the, or the multiplication on the, or the density. Also, you can make an op opposite effect, like if you move the node to, uh, to in a specific direction, the vertices might go to another effect. Uh, to the opposite direction, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I love, well, I'm, I've, I've modified it with the mesh editor and then I'm playing about with this thing as well. And then I'm going to go back to here, go back to the mesh editor. Oh, my book, my things are still there. Delete you. Uh, and then I can go back and then start going, you know what? I'm going to change that bit. This is lovely. Man, this is really, really nice. I'm, and you've got all these different, if I can go there to the modified, so I just add whichever modifier I want. Twist. What's so now? Update mesh. Update every second. Okay. And what do I do? Rotate? Uh, no, no. The, there is a twist volume field in the inspector. You can just move around with the twist volume. Oh yeah. my word! Oh, the mirrored. Field. Oh my love, dude! Oh my word! How does not everyone have this already and use this? How did you not get bought out by Unity? How is this not a standard feature inside Unity? This is crazy. This should be standard. This should be a standard part of Unity. Chat, do you agree with me? Like, you know, to be able to... That's the one thing I always complain about, that Unity doesn't really have any built-in tools for doing this kind of stuff. And... This is this needs to be standard. Um, wow. Okay, I, might, I think I might have lost Matt again. Uh, uh, no, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Matt's I'm back. Listening. Cool. Yeah. I'm so, just letting you stalk. Just letting me rant about. <laughs> the, the chat agrees. So you're saying yes. Did have Unity? Have Unity come knocking on your door to say we would like to buy this? Well, not yet, but that will be. Man, that will be like a dream come true <laughs> if Unity contacted me. 
that will be really amazing but i i guess that's the intention from the unity because uh, to not have such a feature built in because they have a huge community that uh, already creates those things so i guess it's it's kind of logical well they bought out pro builder didn't they in the pro grids thing so oh, yeah so this is a great addition to that you you'd make something in pro builder and then deform it with the deformation tool but, um, well let's be rational i'm not the only one with uh, with such modifiers or with the twist modifiers so i guess there is a there are a lot of people there's uh, there is a big competition that that would be good to say that yeah but you're the only one who's in the who's in this chat right now so you're the only one who matters yeah that's true <laughs> This is a lot of fun. I'm just, I'm just being uh, rational. Does no, they, 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 no, and you're being humble, which you shouldn't be. There's no, there's no time for for being humble. Look at it. I'm stretched down. I was like, you know what? I need to have this cloth. There you go. I want to have this cloth stretched or move it up a bit or whatever. Move it to the right. Loop. This is lovely. Oh my word. Oh my! This is, should we give away a free copy? I need to give away a free copy of this because it's stunning. All right, um, everyone in chat, you know, you know the drill. You know the drill. Let me refresh. Um, okay, this is the complete. Was it? Give it its proper name. Um, yeah, you know, the mesh deformation full collection. Okay, to give it its proper name. Do an exclamation mark raffle in chat if you want to win a copy of this. If you haven't already picked it up in that bundle, then you are sleeping under a rock because this is stunning. Um, most likely, I'm going to say that most people have already got it. Um, if anyone hasn't already got it, then, then now is your chance to get it. Um, it is stunning. It really is beautiful. Let me load up a bigger... I'm not sure I've got a bigger mesh, to be honest. Let me try and see if I've got a really big one. Oh, this might be a big one. Not too sure if it is or not. Eh, it's, not it's not massive, is it? Pretty, though. Yeah, it should still work, I guess. I if not, you can try another modifier. But I want to so use your Sculpting Pro. I want to oh, try out the Sculpting Pro. The Sculpting Pro. Pro works almost with all the meshes, so it's it's not really that limited. Oh, there lovely. is definitely a limitation that Unity has, but it's really far away, like a few millions of triangles. Millions, okay. And I guess it's not really suitable for the real-time application, so that's totally okay. But it's cool if you've got something that you want to deform, like I've got a face or something and I want to deform it, um and then have it change it a bit let, let, let me sorry, let me um actually where's the other one there's two there's maybe this one's gonna be oh which one which one should we deform you get to choose <laughs> well i guess i more liked the second the first one this but one you can you can try both let's yeah, let, both. let's be greedy and do both, both then you can try the sculpting light on the first one and the sculpting pro on the second one. <laughs> oh, let's do that then. All right, so can everyone in everyone in chat? So these are free, by the way. These two. Um, let me put them into chat for people. So these are free gifts. Everyone in chat wins a copy of these. These diesel punk hover vehicles. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is enable an editor. Is that it? Yeah, this is the right setup. But first of all, you have to select an, uh, the mesh, not the object, without the mesh filter. Ah, okay, hang on. First, let's, let me just... Also, unpack the prefab. Yeah. yeah. Naughty prefabs. Okay, so... I want to deform, hello, meshy, and glass, hole, okay, wow, cool, right. And now all you need to do is to add a um, sculpting pro object 
or sculpting per model, sorry. Okay, so you can just add a component add sculpt in pro, pro model. model. Yeah. And that's it. You can now just sculpt the object. Um well, if you're just... in the editor, you can just press the left, left mouse button and you know rise and uh... Oh, hang on. Rise and lower. Maybe try to increase the brush intensity. You can use the shortcuts Alt and uh, and uh, scroll. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Um... If, it's, if it's still not working, you can uh, try to use the intensity multiplier. That's below the brush intensity. Yeah, you can tr type there like, I don't know, five times. Still more, still not working. Maybe if, I try to, maybe if I exit in and put it back on. Okay, try again. There we go, now it looks different. Now I've got yellow on it. Yes, this means that the Sculpting Pro is focused on this specific object. So you've got more features, and you know you can you can use the undo and so on. But I wonder why it doesn't work. Actually, try to increase the the multiplier to like twenty or one hundred. One hundred. Let's increase the intensity. Yeah. Nah, it's not doing anything. Have I broken no. it? Maybe it's because it. Do you have any console, console lock or errors? Um, no need from that. Pick the other, okay. the other asset. Odd. Okay. Oh, so this is Exit strange. scoping is. Still original. Is image. your is your gizmos enabled in your editor? Okay, so that was the problem. Ah. Maybe it's gizmos big because it makes the uh, Unity editor run at. You know, it, it makes the custom editor run at uh, in the editor. It should be working, I guess. Huh? Alright, so let's... <laughs> I broke it! It's the new, newest version of... It's 2021. It's not, it's not um, LTS. I'm sorry, my Wi-Fi is... I'm saying that the, I'm using 2021, yeah. which is not yes not yet lts okay. so um still not working still not working what if oh, i wow. grab the fringe uh try to make a, an um a cube let's try Let on it on if it if it uh, if it works even so all right so let's make a cube right free the object cube let's do this um Yes, now you have to add a uh, sculpting pro model component. Okay. And now I would, um, yes, sculpt this object and I would increase the, the, the vertex count on this cube. So you have to subdivide the mesh. There are the mesh features on the left. Yeah. All right. Now try to sculpt uh, the cube. Surface nor normal is the default, so it should be working fine with it. And try to increase the brush intensity. It's not working. Oh, 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 oh maybe um, now, uh, maybe I know what's the issue. <gasps> what's the try issue? to have, try to have a game, a game window at the present. Try to move. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. No, no, yes, that's the issue. Be I don't know why, but the Unity has a really strange, strange thing. Um, for the, you know, for the editor scripts to run run correctly in the editor, so you have to have sometimes the the game window at the present. That's crazy. Well, and there also, you go at home. If you if you if you ever experience it, and you want to know what the problem is. That's probably that could be it. Many people 
ask, ask this and it's already mentioned in the documentation, I guess. So, but I forgot about it. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's, so now if I sculpt this one, I yeah, love this. I, I love this subdivide. Oh, this match already has 20,000 vertices. Yeah, let's do it. While we subdivide that, people in yeah, chat reminding me that the raffle is coming to an end. We have to announce the winner. Okay. Are you ready? Drum roll. And the winner is... Eyes-tastic! Congratulations, Eyes-tastic. You have won. Eyes-tastic. Congrats. Hit me up on the Discord and I'll send you over a gift tomorrow. Congratulations, buddy. All right, so now I can start deforming this hover vehicle. I came to watch just one minute before the raffle. Well, that's perfect timing. That's perfect timing, buddy. This, so this one now, this is the pro version. So the pro, I can handle ridiculously high mesh uh, vertices counts on these meshes yes that's true as well and it has uh, many new features such as you can you can grab the vertices there is a grab feature or a grab tool like in a blender you can just grab the oh. vertices and move them around you can have you you got the undo feature it's it's right on the bottom yeah ah oh, okay cool cool undo is very uh, important without which we'll cry to sleep <laughs> yeah and there is also an auto close seam hand seams handler which is i don't know how to really describe it but you know um the meshes has a seams which are like um, which are like a part of the mesh that creates um, the mesh itself and if you somehow move the vertices the mesh could get uh, the seams could get broken and you can see through the yeah, mesh exactly so it requ it requires an additional calculations which takes a few time but thanks to the multi-threading it's possible to use it so the pro, pro version handled this as well i love this moving feature as well that you've got it's like oh that looks a bit jaggy too many jaggies on here I'm just gonna smooth buff that out it's like going to you the mechanic and going i just need to buff that out smooth you can that also out increase the intensity so we can see more of this of this moving yeah for example <laughs> oh my word this is another great tool this is lovely thanks so how long did this one take to take you to make? Well, did you start this one before the mesh deform, or this this one afterwards? And uh, no, actually, the the main source code comes from the sculpting light. I just extended the sculpting light to the pro version, so ah. it's basically sculpting light, but with the extended features, and you know, it's it's more stable and more focused on professional sculpting in uh, in the real time. Um, Ice Tastic actually, yes, he has just realized he already has the mesh deformation tool. I told you, you probably already got it from the bundle. Most people who, who've used the computer in their life already purchased it, uh, that bundle, I'm pretty sure. Um, but if you hadn't, who else would let, let's let, let's re roll the raffle because Ice Tastic has already got it. Uh, Ice or uh, hang on, no, let's re-roll the raffle. Let's re-roll the raffle. So, um, re-rolling, Eyestastic. I have that misinformation, but we're going to do another raffle of another toy um, as well. Don't worry. So you'll get another chance to jump in. Eyestastic's like, but I won. I was the winner. This is not the no. This is we're doing the raffle for the for the deformation one, the one that we were just showing off. While the raffle was going on, I loaded up the um, the the sculpt one. We're going to do a raffle for. Should we do a raffle for the sculpt pro as well, Matt? Do you have a key for that one? 
Sorry, my Wi-Fi again. <laughs> Just a lot. That's, that's all right, I was yeah. saying, do you have? Sorry. Can we do a raffle for this one as well? This Sculpt Pro is that okay? I know I'm cheeky Thank to you. ask. Yeah, sure. If I will generate a new watcher for this. Yeah, do, yeah, can do it tomorrow. So no, don't, don't, don't do it now while we're on stream in case I accidentally give it out to people. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, right. go giveaway. Am I the only one? Have the, let's do another reroll. Uh, the winner of this one is nice. Uh, Gunsmith, Glyn Smith, Guns, uh, Glyn, G L thirteen Smith. I think it's supposed to be Gunsmith. Uh, do you already have this asset, the 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 Mesh Deformation Pro? Do you already have it? Hello, Anonymous. How you been, buddy? Do you already have this asset? If if speak up in chat, you have to speak up in chat to claim it. The Mesh Deformation Pro. Yeah. I love this Sculpt Pro thing. The fact that you can do on these on the ridiculous number of, of vertices is awesome. Anonymous already has this. You picked this up in the bundle, didn't you, Anonymous? Uh, uh, this well, this one here is using the Sculpt Pro, which is a separate one. So if I now exit sculpt editor and click on this one and add the sculpting light yeah and now if you would like to edit it in the editor you have to enable the in edit mode field which Aha. is which edit. is kind of in the middle above uh, the multi settings of things yeah in, here it is all right so uh gunsmith already has this as well okay picking a winner to the environment, to Dowie, you're the only person who doesn't have this. Did did you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. There you go, Dowie! Exclamation mark! De environment in chat. By the way, Matt, if you want to have amazing shaders for URP, HDRP, build in, you name it, then go over to the Unity Asset Store and check out De environment shaders. They are amazing okay. and they give you a, a, a head start a leg up when doing hdrp or anything really okay cool i will check it out definitely put How a link in, in, in chat can you give me an exclamation mark d environment so i can show it to matt somebody in chat please do an exclamation mark d e environment if you can please it takes about 20 minutes for the lag in chat to to come up while we wait there, I will be increasing. Oh, I get it. Yeah, I found it actually. Where's the sub? Do I have a subdivide on this one? Thank you so much, Sunny, for putting the link in chat. Uh, well, if you would like to subdivide the mesh with the sculpting light, you have to use the mesh pro editor. You have to uh -huh. go back to the mesh pro editor and subdivide it in the mesh modification I should, category. I should do that. So here's the um the environment awesome shader collection cool. which keeps on getting bigger and bigger which is ridiculous because um you know he's just going to be throwing away his money because instead of making more and more different packs which i keep telling him he should be doing he should be charging people for more and more different packs rather than letting people pay once and get all these amazing free updates but he doesn't listen he likes to give people presents it's a generous person but never mind that's, that's it's like blender but in unity yes this is like blender but in unity exactly that way um all right so i'm gonna go back to mesh editor then i'm gonna go to mesh mod, uh mesh subdivide see i remembered subdivide three subdivide mesh oh ten thousand vertices no that should be okay because mesh mesh uh, sculpting light is using the multi threading so okay you can also use high poly meshes so it's totally okay all right okay so i'm gonna go now to um i guess you didn't light. increase it did i not increase it said that it did i think you didn't <laughs> hang on back to mesh editor mesh 
What if also, I, I would remove the mesh collider because it's, ah, it's yeah, it's. Do I have a clear view? Restore original mesh. I've already mocked it up. Uh, <laughs> I've already because, broken it. Uh, uh, no, because you you went back um, when the mesh was already edited, exactly. and you went back to the mesh pro editor, which doesn't really hold the mesh data from the initial state when you remove the component, or when you go back from another component to an to another. You have to save the mesh to the assets as uh, assets folder, <gasps> unfortunately. I did subdivide it because now it's telling me it'll be thirty two thousand. Shall I subdivide it to thirty two thousand? Yeah, you can try. Let's do it. Oh my god. Oh you so you can restore the original. Wow. Mesh. Yeah, that's uh <laughs> Oh my that's... that's heavy for the unity itself. Oh, and then when I've restored uh, it... now you have to refresh the the normals. I guess it's possible when you press vertices <laughs> or just to generate vertices. Yeah. Um... I know it's too many vertices to generate actually. Try to press the restore the only original mesh again. Yay! Here we go. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> that was scary. Nibble not just oh, saw no. the stream. Welcome, Nibble not. That's that's. We've been streaming for a while. It is, it is. Matt needs to be getting to bed. I just realised it's now like one o'clock in the morning for him, and I'm I'm just too ex. I wanted to play his games because he's made amazing games that are multiplayer. We could play them together, but I got so distracted by the amazing mesh deformation full collection, which is possibly one of my favourite assets now on the complete asset store. Oh, Out of the ten thousand assets I think I have played him, that's now up there in my top ten favourite assets. I have to tell you, this isn't a lie. I'm not just blowing smoke up your bum bum because you're on the stream. I this is so much fun. The fact that I was doing it in the edits. It is you said you don't want to compare yourself to Rayfire, but it's like the same amount of fun, even more fun in some respect, than I had playing with Rayfire. Uh, which which is awesome. I love this. This is amazing. I have to tell you. Really do. And and the fact that you started doing it when you were thirteen makes me hate you even more. Oh my word. It's just how talented is this person? It's it's disgusting. I, just, I, I really appreciate it very much, and I can, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's so so many compliments that, you know. You should be, you. you should be ashamed of yourself being so good. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't even know. Oh, I lost you. <laughs> I love it. I love it that we lost Matt on. To be honest, I don't even know. And then we lost Matt. Let's wait for Matt to come back in. Can this tool deal with UV padding, UV blending? Looks like a lot of fun. Well, I'm going to say yes, I'm assumed so. Let's see when Matt comes back here. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Never... You're back I now. Lost... <laughs> I lost the connection. Sorry. <laughs> Have you, I you, don't know if you heard me. Well, I lost you on the perfect part because you said, I don't even know, and then I lost you. So it was like, it was the perfect, I don't yes, even know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I said that I don't even know what I'm doing with my life. So I guess it's it's pretty normal for, for a life, you know. Still still searching for the point in it. Well, you're, you're still only 15, so you've got plenty of time to, to find, so don't worry. <laughs> Now we got a question in chat. Sorry, I lost the question again. <laughs> Sorry. I was saying that you're only 15 years old, so you've got a lot of life ahead of you. Don't worry. Well, I was just joking that I'm 15. I'm actually <laughs> 22. So you're still I'm 2000. You're still, you're still dis you're still disgustingly young. As this, it's it's <laughs> it's sickening. Um, it be true. Now, question before we lose you again: UV padding, UV blending. Can you handle it? The UV blending, like in handling or just editing the UVs on your model. Uh, well, in, I'm, on... like when I'm when I'm doing these, mm -hmm. these this, this deformation, you're you're handling the changes to the UV map and, and everything yourself. But I, but well, 
how does that actually work? uvs are still the same i don't really handle any uvs so so, so it's, the, it's, the you're not doing anything regarding uvs or we can change no, uvs no, exactly i do i don't do anything with the uvs uvs are still the same this is all just witchcraft. I know well, for said well, like yeah. FFS, <laughs> for fudge sakes. Uh, I know he's, he's, he's so young. It's disgusting. Um, I I still want to play. <laughs> Do you know what? We, we're giving away. We're going to give away a copy of this. Is the light one that you have in the deformation pack? This one here is if I uh, go now to this object. How do I out of that edit mode? Click on this yeah. one now i'm using the sculpt pro and i have to say that i i like using the sculpt pro more than the sculpt light uh which you'd expect because it's got loads of features and if you are also wanting the sculpt pro well thankfully uh matt being so beautiful that he is is now giving us a copy of the sculpting pro and do me uh, an exclamation mark mattej vanko in and i butchered your name as well in you can chat. just call me a matt <laughs> m a p t <laughs> normally this is 49 euros trying. and 12 cents i love the fact that the, the the way that unity does the conversion so this is sculpting pro if you've got lots and lots and lots of vertices you want to be using this one but luckily, some lucky badger is going to win a copy of this one. You need to be following this. And also, don't forget that when you win and you've used any of these, you need to leave a review on the Unity Asset Store. Okay? If you've won and you haven't left a review, then we will find where you live. We've got a set of skills, particular set of skills, and uh, we will use those to make sure that you always leave asset store reviews. So you can actually modify the the face and everything. So if you've got an if you've got a character that doesn't have blend shapes and you wanted to customize it, I would just put sculpting pro and change the the features of of the person. Yes, that's definitely possible that but the mesh filter component is is preferable or it's just required because you can't really edit the mesh when when the object contains the skin and mesh renderer so which hang on let me get back inside so i haven't got i didn't i didn't put a blink in import a character which is annoying so which what right what would i add so i've got if i want if yeah. imagine this was a person's face now mm -hmm. skin mm -hmm. mesh render rather than a mesh render so what would i what would i add then which component did well, you say well it's not really possible to edit mesh with with a skin and mesh renderer uh, the component will basically ask you to convert your skin and mesh renderer to the mesh renderer and ah. that's the only way how to edit a mesh so it's not a problem but but the biggest problem is like he, your character will be defaultly in the default pose and the default pose is mostly the t pose so it's it will be it's it's kind of funny to edit um the characters in the default poses this is like pro builder on steroids yes that's a good way of describing <laughs> this and i said earlier that unity bought pro builder so they should go and buy this in my opinion as well Oh, I, I, w I wouldn't dare to compare my asset with the Pro Builder. I, I guess they have a reason to use it. Oh, look at me! Yeah, I just tried well. that. Um, you shouldn't be. Don't be. Don't be shy. Well, I'm shy. I'm just. I'm just being, you know, honest or just. Uh, how to say that? What? The? Oh, I love this. One. Best, it's not the best, us, you know. Oh, I love just breaking things down. So this is the thing. I'm going to load up pretty all my assets that I've got, and I'm just going to go around breaking stuff. Stylize? No way. I can, what, polygonize things? Yeah. 
Hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop, stop. Hang on. Wait. Exit sculpting. Hang on. Delete. No way. Hang on. I deleted the camera as well by accident. Um, no. Delete. Delete. Let's put in. Okay. Put this back in here. Unpack. Sculpting pro model. Uh, you have to. Oh, I've got to do the. the select the mesh obviously i know that i was just testing you to see if you're awake i was just testing you yeah <laughs> all right i'm still i'm still okay so no worries now stylize so what if i just make my massive brush it takes a little bit time you, you have to be a little bit slower with the stylize because it's it's very heavy for uh, calculation Have you, has there like been a limit of what you've been able to stylize? You can also increase the intensity to see much better results. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's getting more crazy. <laughs> oh my God. What it basically does, it just um, search for the nearest vertices for each vertex. And it basically split the vertices into 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 one, and it looks like it's a, it's a low poly, but it it really depends on the lighting. So <laughs> I've, this is more I've the butchered game it. Normal. I've butchered it. <laughs> it. It looks kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> I've just I've destroyed it, and now I can go even worse. I go. <laughs> This is, this is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm going to be spending my... I was supposed to be making some games this weekend, right? Playing about. But no, cool. I'm just going to do this instead. Go around and go... <laughs> no, restore to original mesh. <laughs> this is, oh my God, I love this. This is so much fun. Oh my word. All right, I need to announce the winner. Um, Krakatawo. First message, first time chatter, first thing you've ever said was exclamation mark raffle. That's perfect timing for you, Krakatoa. Don't forget to click on that follow button. Otherwise, your ra your raffle will not count. Uh, guess the games will be very broken games. There will be very broken, very deformed games, buddy. They will be very deformed. Uh, all right, let's announce that winner. Good luck to everyone. The winner is... Ice tastic! How I did not rig that. That is not rigged. That is not rigged. Ice tastic, who won the first raffle but turned out he already had it and he misunderstood and thought he was raffling for this one. Now has this one. Ice tastic, congratulations. Bingo! There you go. <laughs> oh my word. There you go. You, you couldn't make it up. It couldn't have been scripted if I tried. Good it. It was perfect. All right, the, before, I, before I let you go to bed, okay? Before I let you go to bed, I need to emphasize something. He doesn't just have mesh deformation things, right? You've got, well, I was going to say, he doesn't just have mesh deformation things, and then I clicked on your ray marcher, which kind of I, looked to me like it was a deformation thing, but what is it? Uh, well, basically, the rematcher is uh, it's a renderer or a, or the how to say that in the, another worlds. Well, basically, it's a renderer or another kind of rendering technique called raymerching, which is not really that popular in the in the I guess I would say in the renderings because it's a subcategory of the ray casting and it's a little brother of ray tracing. So this is basically a real-time ray ray mercher ray mercher. Sorry for the for the pronunciation. Uh, in the in the Unity in the real-time application, it's quite heavy to calculate, but um, I made it. I somehow optimized it for even for the uh, low-end computers and oh, wow. for some else. 
So you can also use it in the VR and in the Oculus Quest, which is the latest features and that I, that I released recently. And That's it's great. still in development as all my assets and uh, it slowly grows thanks to the community because, you know, people are... Um, that's what makes my assets grow, uh, to gather a feedback and work on it as, as the users really would like to have as an asset. If you haven't clear. yet joined his Discord, let me... Uh... Oh, where is the link for you? Oh, you was on your website, wasn't it? You need to put the link for your Discord in all your stuff. I'll tell uh, you it's that. It's already in the description of the assets. There is a Discord. Yeah. But you need you need to put it in your in your in your main. When you go okay. to your main profile page, there you go. Here, you need to put it in the links. Okay, that's true. I can try to do it now. And you must. But while you wait, here's the invite to Matt's Discord. Please join it, because I expected there to be millions of people there. There needs to be more people. On Matt's Discord. We don't make mistakes. Oh, we you. have happy accidents. Thank you so much for the sub. Don't forget to make sure that your Discord and your Twitch is linked so you get access to the VIP section of the Discord where all of the cool stuff is, um, like all my co downloads. Not only does he have that cool, he got a color picker, which I was talking about for a long time that we need color pickers. So if you're doing a VR thing that you want to have a color picker in, the editor in the runtime as well, not just in the editor. Uh, I think. Uh, it? Well, it runs just at the runtime, basically. There you go. So in the, in so in the, if you're doing a VR thing where you can, oh, I want to customize how my yeah. windows look, or my sofa. I want to change the color of my sofa. Yeah, it's definitely possible. That's that's basically a point of the color picker at real time. Cool, I'll be using that in my uh, Sims remake that I'll be trying to make then. You can definitely use it. Awesome. And then down it's here, if I wanted to save the stuff that I was doing, mm -hmm. I would need Save It Pro. Yes, it's possibly, there is a possibility of using your projects, I guess. If you would like to save a staff or hundreds of entities at the, at the, at the time, you can use the say bit plugin. Now the broken games will have lots of random. Exactly, I'm making broken games with loads of colors that you'll be able to customize and then save what you're doing uh, in your game without having to to make my own uh, save load system. So yeah, awesome stuff. And if that wasn't enough, well, do you know what? You need to do some augmented reality in your life. Smart AR, is I'm guessing you're working on a mobile AR game. Yes, I had a client who needed an AR application, and I and I needed like an real time AR AR editor, very simple editor, editor but you know just to move around the things. <gasps> we could make Pokemon Go. They already made Pokemon Go, but we could do it. We could do a mesh deformation AR Pokemon game with color pickers. I'm I'm very sorry, my I got kicked out of the <laughs> network. Again. I was I was just pitching game ideas to do with you. So Pokemon Go yeah. with deforming, with deformation and color pickers, uh, with save load in AR. Uh yeah, basically. It's it's something like that, but I guess you were asking like, uh, why did I made this smart AR? I made it because I had a client who wanted an AR, AR application, and uh, I needed for myself something like a real time AR editor, just to move around some things in in uh, real time. So I made the smart AR. It's it's very simple editor in, re in AR. I love it, man. I'm, dude, I find, if I'm running out of ideas of what to make a game, I just go to your your publisher page and I pick up something. And this is everyone in chat has won a free copy of the language localization asset from Matt. What about Punch Pokemon? 
Do you know what? I keep telling my kids have started watching Pokemon. Right? They they okay. hated Pokemon. They were bought. They they thought it was stupid, and now they're addicted to it. This weekend, they've just been. They've been like he's on. He's on season twenty three already. <laughs> like you okay. know, and there's like twenty four episodes a season or something nuts, and um, I keep saying to them, I like, explaining to my kids, Pokemon um, trainers are abducting and stealing animals that are in the wild keeping them locked in cages that are small balls they are okay. training torturing these animals and and making them fight each other to the death uh, and uh, and it's cool they should all be arrested and go to prison because it's evil and my kids are like no they're petting them they capture them to make them pets and they're like no they're they're free. They're they're free animals. But they he goes no. They like it. They're happy. <laughs> I'm like, no son. I'm gonna t- I'm to I'm gonna have to take my children to an illegal dog fight so they can understand <laughs> what Pokemon really is. But I, I think that dog. social services might have my children taken away from me if I try to do that. I guess that's the most beautiful description of such thing. <laughs> You are really creative. I like it. <laughs> My kids don't let me watch Pokemon with them now because I spend the whole time going, is that a baddie? No, it's his granddad. Why is his granddad <laughs> catching Pokemon? It's that, that looks evil to me. He shouldn't be doing that. Why is the, is, the grandma, is the granddad evil? No, he's a nice granddad. He should go to prison. Quickly call the police. <laughs> That's cool. You sound like a nice dad. <laughs> <laughs> my kids don't think so but i'm gonna let you go to bed because it's very it's past one o'clock for you and if i don't let you go okay, okay. <laughs> i will stay with you for another three hours talking about your assets so can i can you promise me something okay i'm listening can you come back another time yeah sure i am open to any opportunities so I would be more than glad to have another talk. <laughs> awesome. You need to come back because because there's a, so much. These, I mean, uh, even the de- mesh deformation itself is so powerful. There's so many features. Okay, look at all this stuff. Right, we didn't even we didn't even sniff the surface of all the things that you can do in the mesh deformation full collection. Let alone all of Matt's other assets, and we didn't even get to play the Santa silent center three okay there's a link in chat which oh, is available as a multiplayer okay so you can go over to game jolt and get it okay we didn't even get to play silent santa together so matt you need to come back it it will be pleasure <laughs> i will be more honored brilliant <laughs> thank you thank you thank, thank you. you so much for coming i'll let you go to bed mate have a great night it- it's totally okay. I'm very sorry for my disconnections and hopefully I will be more stable next time because actually I'm traveling. So so hopefully it didn't break the experience. No, somehow. it was, you were perfect and I really appreciate you coming on while you're traveling as well, taking the time out of your journey to much. spend it with us. Have a good day guys or have a good night and uh, and hear you soon, maybe. Cool. I was just saying, don't worry, we're all unstable, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was very deep for the night. <laughs> cool, and cool. one last time before Matt goes, give me an exclamation mark. Matej Vanko in chat. Pop over to the Unity Asset Store. Check out Matt. Uh, most of you have been lucky enough to get the mesh deformation in the, in the bundle. Dowie wasn't lucky enough to get it, but he won it tonight. And the rest of you, pop over, pick up his Sculpting Pro, get the language localization for free. And if you'd be wanting to save your games, have a save load feature, well, you can't go much better than getting Save It Pro. It's not Save It, it's Save It Pro. Because like a pro, (laughs) you need to save it like a pro. Thanks for the interview, says Sanyo. See you, buddy. Take care. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you all and have a good night or have a good day. Bye. What a lovely badger. What a lovely badger. Really, I had so much fun. I had no idea that I had picked up such an amazing asset 
like his defamation tool in that bundle. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.